G'day, my name is James Flores and welcome to the inaugural podcast hosted by myself and Callum Knox. Callum recently played a recital here in Albury. It was a brilliant recital of Lung Lay, Dark and Howls and he expressed his interest about starting an, an organist podcast. And yeah, I thought that's quite a good idea. Um, podcasts are, are quite common these days. Um, and there are a few organist podcasts around, especially from my friends, Vidas and Elsra, who run Secrets of Organ Playing. But I think our, our podcasts will be much more casual, uh, talking about organs and talking about life in general. So I hope that's our, our unique selling point. But I will have to apologise for the quality of audio in this inaugural podcast, because we decided to um, record while we were having dinner at a restaurant after his recital. So this is just uh, my phone on the table and an impromptu just discussion about organs. I've tried to clean up the audio here as much as I could, but as you know, the candid moments in life are often the most memorable, and I think this discussion over dinner stuffing our faces with food and all sorts of noises in the background, uh, cutlery hitting the plates, all that kind of stuff, just adds to the the ambience of our discussion. And I think trying to recreate it again after dinner would have, wouldn't have been as enjoyable as it was at the time. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast anyway. And if you'd like to offer us another topic of discussion for our next podcast, uh, please leave your comment in the comment section. I mean, where else are you going to leave it? All right. Uh, and, sorry, just before I stop this voiceover, um, I'll give you a bit of context to where this, where this conversation starts. Callum has just recently been on a date, and he proposed another date, a second date, which wasn't replied to until moments before we started having dinner. So he's debating whether he should open it straight away or, or wait a bit before opening it. So that's where this conversation starts. It's a harder message. You don't want to open it straight away because like, oh, you've been waiting at your phone waiting for a message to come yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, But then, then again, it's like some, sometimes, it's like this particular girl, like sometimes, over the last few days, sometimes I managed to ensure a fight like in minutes. Yeah. So it's not like, I think it's just lucky to be here. Some people, I don't think, yeah. by her kind of uh, the frequency that she replies is probably doesn't really bother. Anyway, this You're is this important it. dating tips. Microphone, microphone's gone out. It's out. Oh, it's on. Oh, it's, it's, on. On. it's, it's on. on there. It's on. Oh, it's on there. No, no, no. Impromptu. Don't worry. I doubt anyone I ever date is going to listen to an organist podcast. <laughs> I wouldn't find a girl to listen to organ music. Would you date a female organist? No. No. <laughs> I don't know any other female organists. Why is um, the organ world dominated by males? It's an interesting question, actually. Like, I think it doesn't help that the church is so male-dominated. Anyway, like everyone who runs the church, you guys, mm. and all the all the kind of private schools that are associated with cathedrals, like cathedral schools in Australia and the UK, mm -hmm. uh, are mostly like all boys' schools for boys' choruses. Yeah, I mean there are girls there. Are, Oh, it's, especially in the UK, it's like take mm. going. I don't. I can't name one female organ scholar in Australia. <laughs> yeah. Has there been one? Oh no, oh, there's a Stacy. Sarah, Sarah Kim. Oh, Sarah Kim. Sarah Kim. Yeah, the most She's famous. One. Yeah. But um. She's the most successful female organ scholar. It's a bit. Australia. It's a bit sad that it's like that. I mean, why is it? You could ask the same question, like, why does organ? Just managed to attract like such fringes of society as well, like mm -hmm. kind of people who are struggling to find their place and other things. I made a video about 
No, maybe I just made a talking video about our organist eccentric. I don't know. I mean, organist normal people. Yeah, are we, yeah, yeah. Are we not? Am I? I guess I'm a bit normal. You're not normal. I'm not normal. No. But most organists that I know, they're not normal. I mean, they're not. That's probably the bad word to say. Most organists you know might be listening to you. <laughs> what I mean is that you got to be a bit crazy to like the organ in the first place. Yeah, yeah. The, the level of normal is all, in organ terms already a bit weird. Yeah. It's like normal is a little bit like. I'm like. You know, a surfer from Manly who plays the organ. <laughs> like, that's like the weirdest combination. The surfing organ. Yeah, it's like. That's your channel name. Oh, maybe one day. You just have sort of track playing. Surfing, surfing, um, surfing videos with bark in the background. <laughs> it sounds horrible. But like, it's thin though, it's like. You didn't eat your yeah. espresso martini. They look like. <laughs> they look like kangaroo. <laughs> They're always some um, coffee beans. I like coffee beans. This is podcast with Callum and James at dinner. <laughs> dinner with Callum. Dude, an intimate evening. Callum and James. Australia's two premier organs. I wonder how many people are actually going to click on this. Scrolling through Spotify. Hey, we're naming people now. <laughs> Amy's just going to make it this far. Oh, that coffee bean. Um, mm. Yeah, no. Lisa, when I was home before, she's like, we need to buy a new coffee machine. She wants to get this... Um, espresso coffee. Yeah, but it's one, right. one way it's... like you, It's got barcodes on the actual pod, so it knows exactly how to... Sounds very complicated. It's very complicated. Sounds like something anti <laughs> But I like the they, they like to know exactly what's I like in it. coffees at home, but I also like my morning ritual is to get a takeaway coffee. I have to get a takeaway yeah. coffee. There's something nice about going to the cafe. Yeah, like getting out of the like, house to do it. Yeah. It's like where I live, you go for a swim, get a coffee, coffee. on the way home. It's like a bacon and egg roll? No, no. No, it's too expensive for an almost. I can't afford that. You've got to save the money for the pub post even so. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a new um, edition coming out. Is there? Of the NEH. I'm quite excited, actually. I wonder if... Because all the hymns are too high. Like, congregations can't sing them at 10 a.m. Mm. Um, you do praise the Lord the Almighty in F major or G major? Uh, G major. G major, that's high. Yeah. It's F too dark. F's too dark, isn't it? Well, in St. James is a high church. Yeah, so you do G major. <laughs> High church, so do high arrangements. What about the now thank we like God, F major or E flat? Oh, um, that's F. That's F. Really? Yeah. I do it in E flat. Yeah, but it's not me who makes decisions, <laughs> just a humble organist call. I could sneakily do it, yeah. yeah. What's another hymn him that's in several keys? Every hymn is in I did. I was doing a carols rehearsal uh, for like a kind of community choir thing. Yeah. Um, and we were rehearsing, and we were rehearsing Hark the Herald, and so I played the intro in uh, what is it, in G. It's in F. <laughs> is it in? Yeah. Well, you, you probably played in G, but I played in. G. Yeah, yeah. No, we played in G. I, yeah. I played in G all my life. Anyway. Yeah. But yeah, this version was in F, but I, I know, you know everyone knows it so well. I start if playing I play it, in G. Intro, and then everyone starts singing like. Squealy. Everyone's like singing in like a different key. And like, then I saw like a B flat in the key signature. And so I start playing the B flat like in the. <laughs> so like, in G the minor. G, so it was like G minor and like all these weird things going. It was like. I was playing like. You know, unintentional false relations and stuff. Yeah. Because my feet were thinking I was in G major, my hands were in F major. Yeah. And the choir was just absolute chance. Luckily, this is only rehearsal. And I just had to stop. I've never been so embarrassed in my life. Sorry. It's like I played Hark the Herald wrong. Like, 
which is like the easiest, one of the easiest kind of human or cowardly shoes. Yeah. It's like two chords. You know, I got a secret about the Christmas carols, and I'm really ashamed of it. What's I've never played the Wilcox except for last Christmas. Arrangement. No, no Wilcox, like, uh, arrangements? Yeah, I never played them until last year. Really? Yeah. Why? I don't know. Just, well, well Catholics don't do it. I know it's like... But I was really, you know, I was happy about it. Does anyone, can anyone sing Jess Cairns? No, I don't have any surprise. Well, if no one can sing Jess Cairns, then that's like an issue. Mm. Like, what are Christmas carols have Jess Cairns? Even if you've got, like, mm. an old lady singing. Jess Cairns are, like, not popular in Catholic Church. Yeah. Mm. yeah that's, oh, that's strange. That's cringe. It's just like their plain song and psalms. And, yeah. Um. <laughs> No, but, but Catholic music can be beautiful. It's going to be done like I said, Mary. Yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Let's say from uh, Westminster Cathedral, I've heard uh, that they've got some carol recording. Yeah. And they do like these crazy desk camps, which are still kind of on the Wilcox uh, harmonies, but they've got like these crazy desk camps and stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I think probably a, yeah, major. Catholic cathedrals are different, so... Mm. <laughs> Thanks. I want an oboe on there now. <laughs> I've got a trumpet. It's good for you. Yeah, I don't I'm happy that it's got... Actually, I would... If you had a choice between an oboe or a trumpet on a small parish or what would you choose? An oboe? An oboe? Yeah. You don't want a bigger room? Trumpets... TV. Well, the St. Paul's College is the perfect example. Yeah. Uh, they have that flint and now there's a new choir trying to do like English romantic, even song repertoire. Yeah. So they put in a crumb horn, which is kind of a soft crumb horn, so it's like an over and it's enclosed. So now they can kind of pull off some sort of English sound with it. Yeah. Well, it's also a crumb horn, so you can use it in. Uh, yeah, like black stuff, yeah. whatever you want to use the point, sort of French stuff. Yeah. So you Is there can... a tremulant? Is there a tremulant? I think so. Has it got a cymbal stone? Yeah. yeah. The, the, you can see the stuff. When's the appropriate... When's it appropriate to use it? The cymbal stone? Yeah. Uh, David Drury put it in on during the... He played Jerusalem. <laughs> Oh, I have the same. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes, please. Yes, please. I saying, yeah, you poured it on during the last verse of Jerusalem. That was pretty fun. Is it loud? And, like, because all the people in the college, it was like a freshness service, so all of them were, like, first year at the college, never been there before. And, like... Yeah, you know, 150 like boys just yeah. all at his turn. <laughs> like, what's going on? Because it was like ding 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 ding. Which is kind of it's kind of cool. Um, Do you listen to organ music more or choral music? Oh. I like some organ music. Listening to like I listen to um. I only really listen to bangers, like, you know, if I want to get G'd up something, chuck on, like, carry on to Westminster or something, like, something loud. Yeah. Uh, but I don't really like listening to whole symphonies and stuff. Mm. It's just like, I don't know, I just don't get into it. Because my passion is mainly in choral music rather than all music. So. Yeah. I think Hamish likes choral music more than solo repertoire. Yeah, I hundred percent. He doesn't. He doesn't really like recital playing. I'm kind of embarrassed, but like I like playing. No, of course I like playing the um, the mainstream repertoire. But, but yeah. not not like your caliber of 
long way, that type of stuff. But like, you know, I'll, I'll be happy to sit down and learn you know, Colonel de Westminster or, you know, those really, those party pieces. I'll be, I'll, I'll be able to learn them. Yeah. But I like learning, like, newly composed contemporary guitar. Um, grand twist. <laughs> I don't know, it's just, um, different. Fraser. Fraser Gartner. Oh, the, um, Bratwurst improvisers. Yeah. Oh, you need to play his pastoral F. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's the um, it's the improvisation on um, Saint Clement. Oh yeah. Yeah. It goes round and round. <laughs> you play it for him, so. <laughs> play for the donors recital of Bowery. It's a bit annoying at St James. So like, don't. I don't know what the hymns are until like a day before. Maybe yeah. you. Because I'm not, I haven't been around long enough to know which hymns we do on which Sunday. So it's like, uh, yeah. So like, I we did bring Calfira the other day. Do you know that? Lord is enthroned in heaven with splendor. Anyway, and there's like Vaughan Williams. There's like one of the three Welsh tunes, preludes on Welsh tunes. Oh, uh, the from, uh, like Rosie the Rosie Bedroom. The, um, there's one on Bryn Calafira. Okay. So like, I want to learn the. I want to learn the. Um, oh, one. Yeah. There's so a lot yeah, of passing go. notes. <laughs> just I look through that. It's just like all passing notes. Do you ever have you ever been told that your postcode's inappropriate? Um, like, um, have you picked something? I haven't really, no one's really said it to my face. Yeah. But I've probably done things in the past that haven't been so appropriate. And as I've matured, I've kind of realised some things um, are not right. But most of the time, nobody cares enough to. I mean, St. James is a very musically. Uh, intelligent congregation yeah. but as long as you're not playing something hugely ridiculous like if you're playing Dew Palmy Noon on Good Friday <laughs> as long as you're not doing that then only the organists are the ones who care you know like in Advent everyone plays the whack it on yeah. or the Noon Palmy yeah like, doesn't that get boring after a while does it become too predictable yeah. Every year, like, can we just play a new setting? Or... Yeah, you can do existing repertoire that is wasn't written for a particular time of year, but could work. Uh, it's like I had an idea. I didn't actually do it, but I had an idea that like the Hal's Third Rhapsody could be used as an advent. Oh, sorry, because it's like the descending kind of motif and stuff. Okay, yeah. Um, just like ideas like that. Like, like you wouldn't play the bar B minor prelude fugue on Easter Sunday. No. It's too dark. You play like a yeah. G major or something. Yeah. As long as you stick to that, people aren't really going to care too much. It's only, yeah, it's only the organists who notice. And really, doing stuff liturgic, that's liturgically appropriate is mostly just a really nice touch to the service and makes the service feel more complete. Um, you know, if you play a piece that's based on one of the hymn tunes you do that day. I always found it cringe that you know, if it's a particular Sunday and you'd sing a hymn that's got the, same, got the words in like the gospel or something, I find it quite cringy. Really? I don't know, maybe it's just me. I don't know, maybe it's like in Catholic Church. Like we did... Something about um, last Sunday was about my new commandment is love one another as I've loved you. Right? Yeah, yeah. There's this like really cringy tune called a new commandment. Catholic hymn. Oh, yeah. You know that one? It just goes on and on. Anyway, I played it. I just felt so awkward about it. You succumbed to the priest. What does that mean? Yeah. You finally, you know, you've taken the. Oh, no. You've succumbed. You, you submitted yourself to the priest's request <laughs> of playing bad music. What's the thing about playing in church, though? It's like, oh, some clergy are really strong about what they want. Yeah. Some, I know some clergy who like to say, uh, so, well, usually at St. James, you do a, um, at most high church, 
you do an improvisation right before the sermon. Yeah. Some clergy like you to kind of improvise on the topic of their sermon. Maybe they're going to talk about a particular hymn tune or something, and they want like you to inject some of the hymn tune <laughs> into your improvisation. It, no, it yeah. happens a lot. You know, one of the reasons why I'm on YouTube. Because you've got no life? Yeah, apart from that. <laughs> but because I found no satisfaction in playing... It sounds bad, but I found no musical satisfaction playing in churches where I am located. Yeah. I didn't have the artistic freedom or flexibility, so I just, you know, did it by myself on the internet. The churches you play in, which shall not be named... Yeah. Uh, unfortunately not the most inspiring liturgical traditions it's just it's unfortunate and someone like you living not living in some where like a city where there are options you kind of got these few churches that you play in and yeah. there's not much you can do there's not there's no you know you can't just call up there's no pool of singers you can kind of call up and ask to sing for you mm. is what in Sydney it's like there's a hundred choral singers and you can just call, call up, up a few and they'll give you fifty dollars to a hundred dollars to sing on something you can't do that in the country. And that's why I formed Swell Box. <laughs> because, like, people who have shared the same values as me, same, like, musical tastes, we could do what we wanted to do outside the liturgy. Yeah. Where we were so, you know, made to sing trendy hymns and stuff like that. Yeah. I do. Do you do motets? Like a communion motet? Um, yeah, we, yeah, lately we've, we haven't been doing any, like, just top and tail hymns for the congregation. Just choir stuff for the yeah. offertory and communion. Yeah. It's nice. It's a start, though. Like, you build the choir's repertoire, those guys' repertoire of, like, simple stuff. But even, like, uh, things that are kind of in a hymn-like structure. Yeah. Or even him choose just to get the choir singing together well, mm. knowing the harmonies and stuff. And but then there's all there's so many kind of simple little motets out mm. there. Like um, yeah, we done a lot, a lot of two part, some three part stuff. But lately I've just been it's not, it's, not, it's it is it's still even hard to get a group of you know, a small number of people together. Mm. You know it's hard to organise. But yeah. I've been focusing a lot of. Unison stuff, I like keep things simple. And unison is like still hard to keep to, to do unison stuff well, I think. Yeah, like can be fun. Yeah. Can be very I was really happy with yesterday's recording. Mm-hmm. That's quite cool. Yep. Because you were there, because you were there. Oh. I learned how oh, yeah. to use the oboe. Are you becoming a <laughs> proper liturgical organist? Well, very early on, start playing organ and stuff. I would never. I'm just thinking about what the sound came from at the console. I wasn't yeah. aware of like. I got to think of what what's it going to sound like to someone down in the name, mm-hmm. and it helps a lot. It sounds yeah. simple. Like people would tell me, "Oh, you have to listen to how you play. You have to listen." What do you mean by listen? I mean, yeah, it's really um. Helpful listening to recordings of itself. Yeah. It's one of the great things about you know, the pandemic is brought out. Like, I can listen back to like hymns or accompaniments, yeah. post sides. Um, and there's so many, it's a very eye opening experience. Mm. So many things you don't think you're doing that you are. It doesn't lie. The worst thing is listening <laughs> back to yourself play far and you hear how uneven, you know, the way the passages are and stuff. Yeah. It's like, it's, it, it's a bit daunting this is all. there's some people that record themselves all the time but yeah. still don't listen to themselves <laughs> yeah it's like a lot of singers the big thing with singing actually singers hate listening to themselves I don't know it's well, I used to be a singer but like but that's what it sounds like to people though mm. you gotta I accept know. that yeah it's good to say yeah I hated what listen- you think you sound like may not be what you actually sound I hated listening to myself 
I was recording some myself. But like, yeah, but that's actually what people hear. So if you can't stand it, then that's that's exactly what they're hearing too. Yeah. Yeah. It's a deep conversation. It's very deep. Deepest conversation I've had in a long time. The organ, eh? Who would have thought we'd be here in this country village? Eating crispy in this chicken weird, breast. weird French restaurant, which also shall not be named. I'm gonna have to cut out and bleep a lot of things out. Chicken's, uh. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Well, good. You know so that it's good when the plate comes back clean. Well, you might be more starving, you yeah. know. Yeah, exactly. I watch Gordon Ramsay a lot. Do you? Yeah, I like it. I know, I'm really into it right now. <laughs> oh, yeah? Okay, yeah. what's he doing there? I haven't seen it. I don't know, he's just swearing a lot. Or? New stuff or old stuff? Old stuff, yeah. Old stuff, yeah. He oh. obviously didn't like that, whatever. No, well, I, I didn't realise he was stuffing until like when I finished the okay. chicken. I was like, oh, anyway. Well, come on, don't leave it alone. <laughs> That's the best part. You're making me. Oh, seriously. It's like, it. like my mum. Watch it. You won't get dessert if you don't finish your plate. The words of Pink Floyd. We're watching you. Don't give yeah. it to him. <laughs> Here comes the aeroplane, Jane. <laughs> Thousands of people listening to this. Turn me light away to the most popular podcast. Yeah. Impromptu on an iPhone. Didn't even know it was Not doing even this. proper mic. I pop to the bathroom. You trick me. <laughs> oh no, no. no. <laughs> it's only been 47 Check minutes. Check it on the phone. <laughs> and that's where the podcast ends, folks. Callum had to go to the bathroom, and I jokingly said he's going to open the message there and read it. But no, no, he didn't. He didn't read it there. But anyway, that potentially might be a discussion for the next podcast to be continued. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, finally, we actually don't have a name for this podcast, so if you have any suggestions, leave it in the comments. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.